Good morning. We invite you to sing with us as we gather for worship. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. All creation join to say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing, O hymns and earth reply. Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Lifts a victory paradise. Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King. Alleluia. Where all oh, death is now your sting. Alleluia. Jesus died our souls to save. Alleluia. Where your victory, O oh, grave. Alleluia. Hail the Lord of earth and heaven. Alleluia. Praise to you by both be given. Alleluia. Every knee to you shall bow. triumphant now. Alleluia. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine, but saving, healing here and now, and touching every place and time. In every insult, rift, and war, where color, scorn, or wealth divide, Christ suffers still, yet loves the more, and lives where even hope has died. Women and men in age and youth can feel the Spirit, hear the call, and find the way, the life, the truth revealed in Jesus freed for all. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age, till earth and sky and ocean ring with joy, with justice, love, and praise. i 
twisted by the wind And we're only drifting further from the shore Now we need the one who saves To help us turn from how we've sinned And to show us all that we were made for more When we're feeling like we're lost out on the sea We'll remember we don't have to fear Cause we have been set free Jesus, with a heart that reaches out through every storm, in the presence of the living God, we find our meaning, and we are being transformed, and in the love of Christ, we can change the world. Seeking out relationship We could make a way that welcomes everyone Cause we know that this is it So here and now we will equip Our communities to work until it's done When we feel out on the sea We'll remember we don't have to fear Cause we have been set free Seeing through the eyes of Jesus With a heart that reaches out through every storm In the presence of You're trampled on the ground And when you feel like you might pack it in When you think you might be done Remember to look deep within Cause in Him you've already won Sometimes it seems we can't do right And everything is wrong Clouds are blocking out the light And we've forgotten how to sing our song Just feel the main vibration Let your heart beat with the word In Christ we find our transformation In Him the music's heard It's in His grace that we are saved Unbound from fear of the grave it's in his hope and love that we're carried through the dark night of the soul because he lives we will rise again yeah 
where Jesus lives and we will rise again. Good morning. Welcome to Gracetown. We're glad to have you here with us as we worship God together this morning. If you are a guest with us, we invite you to um, the back of our bulletin. There's a QR code there that you can scan to fill out our connect form. We would love to get some more information from you so we can connect with you after the service. And we'd love to meet you um, this morning as well if we haven't already. Uh, this morning during worship, our children are in other spaces around campus preparing for next Sunday's Children's Sabbath, and they will move to the Fellowship Hall during the Bible study hour, so make sure to pick up your children from there later. And if, you, if, you, if there are children in here who want to join them, they can do that now as well. Uh, today in worship, our choir and musicians are leading us in our Easter cantata titled A Journey of Hope, a cantata inspired by spirituals by Joseph M. Martin. Yes, Easter Sunday was last week. Um, but in the church calendar, we continue to celebrate the Eastertide season for 50 days leading up to Pentecost. So today we continue to celebrate Christ's resurrection through music. And as the composer writes about this piece, Christ is the journey and he is the journey's end. That is our hope and prayer for this morning. So let us worship together. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to say a short prayer to start us off today. Creator, we thank you for the gift of music, 
in the body of believers. Be with us here and now. Be present in worship as we sing and listen. May our hearts be moved. Amen. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, Son of God. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. People, people went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. 
And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. In all, Jesus called to his ministry twelve disciples. Following in faith, they walked beside him throughout his travels. They beheld miracles and wonders, and he began to teach them a new way. In time, nearly all would be martyred for their faith. Through loneliness and rejection, persecution, and even unto death, they followed on, choosing Jesus over all.
Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. When Jesus saw the people, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he began leading them and teaching them many wonderful things. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light.
Jesus began to draw great multitudes wherever he went. His reputation as a healer and teacher had grown throughout the land. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the chief priests began to plot to kill him, for many of the Jews were believing in him. When Jesus and his chosen ones approached Jerusalem, many gathered palm branches and went out to meet him, singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and blessed is the King of Israel. And as the time for Passover drew near, Jesus began to prepare his disciples for the Passover feast. Jesus knew the time was near for him to leave this world and go to the Father. They all gathered in an upper room and shared the evening meal together. During the meal, Jesus revealed more of his mission to the twelve. To the amazement of the disciples, the teacher wrapped a towel around his waist, poured water into a basin, and began to wash their feet. When he had finished washing their feet, he returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked him. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them.
After the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples moved from the upper room to a nearby garden they had visited many times before. During the cool of the evening, they rested and pondered all that they had experienced. Jesus went ahead of them deeper in the garden to pray. Jesus withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground.
glare of blazing torches and the clamor of centurion armor, Jesus was arrested and brought to Pilate's court to face his accusers. Responding to the crowd's cries for crucifixion, Pilate gave the order for Jesus to be executed. The soldiers showed no mercy as they beat him and laid a heavy wooden cross upon his back. Jesus then began the slow and painful climb up to Calvary. Carrying his own cross, he went to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Jesus climbed the hill of song. 
The sky grew dark as the sounds of a gruesome crucifixion echoed across the rocky landscape. Even in his final fragile moments of life, Jesus loved those he had come to save. Those final precious phrases reveal a heart of mercy and a message of hope for the world. No words of complaining or condemnation, no words of bitterness or regret, one last expression of love. Father, forgive them, and grace fell like a gentle rain upon a parched and withered creation. Father, forgive them, and the garden began to dream once again of life. One last cry, it is finished, and the journey to hope was made clear, the path cleared of all stones. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus, our lamb and our shepherd, is the journey, and he, the journey's end.
On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen.
Thank you, choir and musicians and Pam and Christian and our narrators for a wonderful, beautiful morning of worship and music. Thank you for all of the hours you put in to preparing this cantata, and we thank you for leading us this morning. Um, before we end today, we want to let you know of many things happening in the life of our church in the next week, actually. Um, so if you'll just stay with me for a minute as we have some announcements. Um, right after this service, so just in a couple of minutes, um, as a reminder, we are having a very short call to church conference. And so please stick around for that. We have two very quick, hopefully, motions to um, present before you this morning. So if you will stick around for that after the benediction, that would be wonderful. Um, on Wednesday... This Wednesday, April 10th, is our next Sexuality, Gender, and Faith Education Forum, beginning at 6 p.m. In this session, we will hear from Reverend Donnie Anderson and Natalie Ajo on the language of LGBTQIA+, and why it matters. Most of our session will be led by Reverend Donnie. He will share her personal story as a trans woman and ordained clergy person. Reverend Donnie will also be meeting with our youth before the forum at 4.30 in the youth building. Um, so let me know our, uh, if you have any questions about that. Um, we will have dinner served again at 5.30 p.m., and please make sure to RSVP by tomorrow, or today would be even better, um, to let us know you're eating with us so we can get an accurate count. We hope you will join us Wednesday for this important conversation. Also this week, on Friday, we are hosting another Parents' Night Out um, from 6 to 8 p.m. You can drop your kids off with us for a couple hours and enjoy some well-deserved time away. As always, we'll provide dinner and activities for our children, and we'll also use this time to rehearse and prepare for Children's Sabbath. So thank you to the Edge Sunday School class who is sponsoring this event, and please sign up today um, or let Pastor April know if you have any questions. On Saturday the 13th, um, here at 5 p.m. in the gathering room right across from us, um, we are hosting a regional screening of Baptist Women in Ministries Story. Um, this film is called Midwives of a Movement, and is being shown across the country at different churches and different places. Um, so we will be hosting it this Saturday. Uh, Meredith Stone, the executive director of BWIM, will be here. And they are celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. She will be here to answer any questions and have conversation um, about the state of women in Baptist life today, as well as show this movie at 5. So we hope you'll join us for that as well. And then next Sunday, we have two things going on. Um, first, our children, or sorry, our youth are having a fundraiser in the afternoon, our trivia night. And um, that will be our fundraiser for the whole year to raise money and funds for our youth to go to camp and to go on retreats throughout the year. It will be at 5 p.m. in the fellowship hall. And please sign up by Thursday so we can put you on teams. Um, and trivia is free to play. We are asking for a suggested donation of $5 for dinner. We'll have burgers, hot dogs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and all ages are invited, so if you have friends who want to come play trivia, um, invite them as well, and that will be next Sunday afternoon. And then lastly, like I mentioned, we have Children's Sabbath next Sunday during worship. They, will, they are practicing that right now, and they'll be leading us in worship um, through song, words, actions, and more, um, and they're excited to share their work with you. Thank you for being here today. I just want to say again, thank you to our choir, thank you to Pam, thank you to Bill and Annie, and our guest instrumentalists uh, for today. Thank you very much. And now go with this benediction. Love is the spirit of this church. May the songs we sing celebrate this love. May the lives we lead embody this spirit. And may we all go forth on our journeys in peace. Amen.